Hi, I'm the Reverend Lynn Cox. My pronouns are they, them. I'm the interim minister at the Unitarian Society in East Brunswick. This video is part of a series for newcomers to help newcomers get to know the congregation. Hi, I'm Marie Phelan. My pronouns are she, her. I am the inco incoming president of the Board of Trustees for the Unitarian Society. And this is um, a, uh, a video about our governance. Great. So we're going to learn how TUS works, and at least on a formal level. Yes. So Marie, what is the Board of Trustees? So the board is um, primarily a governing body and it's made up of elected members. Um, we serve by managing the overall organization of the Unitarian Society. We provide leadership in operational financial decision-making and we are always guided by the mission of the congregation and we are compelled by the bylaws. So the bylaws provide your guardrails and your mission provides the North Star and both of those things are um, the product of the whole congregation. That's right. Yes, the the congregation, um, we, we as the board, we represent the congregation. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to remember that board members are members of the congregation. It's not the board separate from the congregation you you're all one exactly what does the board do so um between our general membership meetings um which usually take place in may we um oversee matters of policy management um oversight of all the officers employees committees and organizations of the society. And um, in our in the discharge of our duties, we have certain specific powers um, where we use the bylaws as a um, as a guide. So we manage safeguarding control of the property business and financial affairs, and we prepare the annual budget. Uh, we fix the compensation of all employees of the society, and we appoint members to the nominating team. And if it becomes necessary, we can appoint an auditor to audit our books and financial records. Um, we also manage contracts. We serve as the agent for interim and contract ministers. We appoint delegates to General Assembly. We appoint other task forces, such as our mission task force, um, and also the contract search committee, which will be coming up in the fall. Uh, we recommend actions to the membership as a whole. Um, this, an example of this is, um, our parsonage, which is used twice a month by Reverend Lynn and sits vacant the rest of the time. So now we're looking to see what a, um, a better use of that property would be. And we reflect on strategic planning and the institutional health of TUS. That is a lot. Yes, it's it's a lot. It's a big responsibility, but it's also a labor of love for um for the members um of TUS that take up that lay leadership. Great. I wanted to kind of go back uh, that the board fixes the compensation of employees, but the the minister is the chief of staff mm -hmm. and kind yes. of does hiring and firing in consultation with the board. That's so correct. The, so the minister can't hire somebody completely without the board's approval because the board would fix their salaries and the minister is kind of taking the lead on that process. Right. And, you know, the board really, we re we represent the congregation. So um, that that is why, um, you know, 
it, things are done in consultation. Um, the board and the minister have a close relationship. Mm -hmm. How does someone get to be a member of the board of trustees? Well, um, the nominating team that the board, um, you know, that we um, present uh, to the congregation, they're res responsible for an annual slate. Um, the nominating committee um, speaks to people that might be interested. And if they agree, um, they um, become a nominee for either officers of the board or trustees or governors of the endowment fund. So um, so also uh, important um, that the chair and other members of the Unitarian Montessori School Board um, are on the slate also because that business is very, very important to the health of the Unitarian Society. And it's part of the society that the Montessori yes. School is is a is a ministry of the congregation it's a non-sectarian yes. school they don't teach unitarian universalism in the school and it's a unitarian universalist value to have a school that um is raising creative critical thinkers and peacemakers so that's that's yes. our that is they, a product uh, of the congregation right uh, the montessori school definitely um exemplifies um the um the learning that we want for our young people and um that's shown in their um school board which consists of members of the unitarian society as well as um a parent representative because that is a very important piece Right. So there's a, there's a whole other video about the Montessori school, but just to say that that's also part of the governance. So mm -hmm. the nominating team comes up with this slate and then right. what happens? And so at the um, general membership meeting in May, the slate is voted on by a simple majority of members who are eligible to vote. Okay. And uh, so in order to be eligible to vote, uh, you need to be a member for at least six weeks. So uh, there's a organizational chart here and I'm going to share it. Uh, so up here at the top, you see members of TUS are voting on the board of trustees and the endowment governors. And uh, we did, did the members did vote on members of the nominating committee this past meeting. And then here's the board of trustees in color. So why don't you talk about who's on the board? So um, my term on the board will begin on June 1st and it will end on May 31st of 2025. Our um, vice presidential position is currently vacant. We have our treasurer, Kathy Scarborough, who is, I believe, beginning her sixth term as treasurer. Secretary is Lynn Fryer. She is beginning her third term. And then we have our trustee, Heather Wall. She uh, is beginning her second term. Um, our Montessori School Board rep is Marlene Mulroney, and she is the current chair of the Unitarian Montessori School Board. And then we have our minister, Reverend Lynn Cox, who is an ex officio member of the board. So all of the, the it's in the bylaws that the minister is an ex officio member of the board without vote. So I go to the board meetings, um, and uh, you know, provide reflection and advice if, if asked. Uh, and I provide a pretty uh, lengthy report most months, um, but I don't vote. I also, in my case, because I'm a contract minister, I'm as an interim, I have a contract instead of a call. 
the board acts as my supervisor in a way that that um if we just if we decided we wanted to change my contract if the board decided that i should leave early if i decided i need to needed to leave early that would be a conversation between me and the board in co in uu congregations that have a called minister the whole congregation votes about extending a call to that minister and they are on an open ended um covenant with the congregation uh, for a congregation of Tussa's size, it makes more sense to have a contract minister so that it's an arrangement between the minister and the board and um, and an, an annual renewal. So right. the bylaws makes room for both of those scenarios. Yes, and recently um, the board voted to extend Reverend's uh, contract for another year. Right. So I am on for one more year, and then the board will also appoint a contract minister search committee uh, to search for the next minister who's going to follow me. All right. So that's kind of who's on the board. Um, there are some vacancies. The board's working on that. Um, and there's always room for more leadership. Yes, for, for sure. Um, our our uh, members of the board. Um, so in order to be an officer, it's recommended that the, um, th that the member um, have had membership for at least one year and be 18 years of age or older. Mm -hmm. um, although in the past, there has been a youth representative to the board. Mm. Um, but that hasn't been so in a long time. Um, and then it, in order to be eligible for election as president or vice president, um, it's preferred that a member have had some time on the board. Um, and that would be a, a minimum of at least one year of service. But it doesn't have to be continuous. It could have been someone was on the board in the past and they can come back to be elected president. Um, right but we don't like to drop people directly in the deep end. No. So tell us about it, a typical board meeting. How does a board meeting usually go? So um, most of our board me meetings are on Zoom now. So, um, you know, people will get on and we'll, you know, just have light conversation, but then there's an official check-in once, um, Everyone is ready to, you know, one when, when everybody is there. Um, that will hopefully be short and everybody gets a turn. Um, and then uh, Reverend Lynn will light the chalice and do a reading, which is um, thought provoking and relevant to our work. We will then uh, read the board covenant. Um, Covenant is important because it um, it's agreed on by all of us and it shows us how to be with one another doing this very important work. Um, visitors are invited and welcomed and we do have a 10 minute um, amount of time set aside for visitors comments um and everyone is welcome all you need to do is hop on um then we go over our consent agenda which um usually contains um the minutes from the last meeting and it, there could be minutes that were pulled out because of an error or something. Any any item in the consent agenda can be pulled out by any board member to be discussed. So the consent agenda is like a package of things that maybe don't need a lot of debate. So accepting reports or minutes or just things that aren't controversial. Uh, sometimes if something comes up between board meetings, the board will vote over email 
so yes. that someone can proceed with an action. And then you might follow up with putting that vote in the consent agenda so that can it be in the official minutes that you had that vote. So then after the consent agenda. Then um, we go over reports. Um, Reverend Lynn uh, writes a report each month um, that we, uh, we go over and any items that are highlighted are items that the board specifically needs to take a closer look at. Mm -hmm. um, there is also our treasurer report. Um, so we'll go over that. There might be some discussion there. And, um, and then we come to the items that are for discussion and voting. Um, not every meeting has items that are up for a vote. Some are just at the discussion stage. Some items will be discussed and uh, voting will be held off and we call that tabling a discussion. Um, and then um, if necessary, we'll have an executive session which um, consists of the officers and um, that's to usually it has to do with um, employment issues, um, anything to do with staff, any 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 really delicate matters um, which um, like if you're in the middle of negotiating a contract, and right. it's privileged information. So, so at that point, the, so the the any visitors are welcome to stay up until the executive session, and then we thank the visitors for coming and wish them a good evening, and then head into That's executive right. session. Mm -hmm. And if the executive session is about my contract uh, or about evaluating the minister, I'll usually step out too. Right, and it, that was another thing. Uh, I, I I don't think we really talked about that, but the board has kind of um, gives an annual um, update as to what we've done the past year. And um, we also um, have things that we need to complete um, regarding the minister. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's one way that we give our service. Right. How long is someone on the board? I think we talked about this a little bit, that uh, there's terms for officers and terms for trustees, but they can renew. Right. So the main trustees, they serve two-year terms. Um, the officers serve one-year terms except for the treasurer, and then I'll get into the the treasurer. They have um, an, an, an initial three-year term because of the learning curve um, of the treasurer. Um, it's it's, it's, a, lot it's, a, it's yeah. a lot to learn, yeah. You don't and, want an annual turnover of your treasurer. No. Um, so other than the treasurer, officers can serve in the same office for no more than four years. The treasurer, as I said, her, their initial term is three years and it's renewed for up to six additional years. So they, they can, uh, be treasurer for up to nine years. Um, and by that point, they will be very experienced in the role. Mm -hmm. What else should newcomers know about governance at TUS? Well, as you mentioned before, um, we we use email as a way of um, discussing uh, matters. Um, we've also done email votes. Um, most most of our meetings are now on Zoom. Um, and then um, if there's, if we're gonna, you know, look at what's needed in regards to a quorum, 
mm -hmm. and tabulation of votes as they apply if we're taking a vote. Because if there's absences during a board meeting and we don't have a quorum, those things that need to be voted on will have to wait. Right. And a quorum in the board is half plus one. So if there's like this past year, there were seven members of the board. And so four members of the board is a quorum. So one, then, then one last question that I'll just throw out at you from nowhere is that what do you like about serving on the board? What I like serving on the board is um, a big part of it is really um, knowing everything that's going on with the congregation and um, and being able to um, be a lay leader in a way that um, leads the congregation to be being a healthy religious institution and for the betterment of everyone that's there. It's the way that I'm serving now and um, and I'm glad, I'm very glad to be in this role. Great. Well, thank you for meeting me with me and helping me make this video for our newcomers. And I look forward to seeing everybody soon. And thank you, Reverend Lynn. Um, appreciate uh, your questions and, um, and I'll look forward to meeting with all of you on Sunday, June 2nd.